Welcome to the next installment of our special USCCA broadcast with Eric Hung from Pew Pew Tactical. We've seen record growth in the number of new gun owners in the past month, and we're going to dive into the topics every gun owner should know about. Let's get started. All right, next logical steps for gun owners, Eric. Um, you've you've bought your gun. Um, you're you're you know you've you've made that first step. You understand that it's not as easy as as uh, everyone in the media has been making it out to be. But you finally got that thing. Um, you've got it home, and maybe you've even made your first trip to the range. What do you do next now uh, as you grow into this? Yeah, I'd say just uh, read a lot of stuff, uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos, know how to clean and store your gun. Um, and you don't need to completely break down everything, but at least know how to field strip. So basically that's just taking mm -hmm. off the, the slide if it's a handgun or the upper and lower receivers um, and BCG for AR-15s. Uh, just know like mm -hmm. basic things. Uh, it's still a piece of metal. It's still something mechanical. So you have to do a little mm -hmm. bit of maintenance uh, to them. I'd say that. Yeah. And then sort of just back to before, like have a good amount of like gear, uh, like mm -hmm. belts, holsters, ammo, keep those three at least uh, of high quality. You can skimp a little bit on other things um, or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's all good. And I would say also just, just train a lot, um, either online or offline. Uh, definitely look into dry firing. So that is shooting mm -hmm. at home without live ammo. Uh, so we're just working on that trigger finger because in the end, that's what really puts uh, rounds on target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I want to go back to something that you said and you just glossed over. And I can tell you are a gun guy now um, at the at the deepest portions of this. You said BCG. And if there's anybody who's watching who doesn't know what a BCG is, that is the bolt carrier group inside your AR-15. So when you take it apart, that's the the major portion of the action that comes out in your hands. And uh, on you know, I can, I can nerd out on this all day long now because if you're using a gas impingement gun, that's going to be the really dirty part. But if you're using a piston gun, it stays pretty clean and never mind well read it on eric's website he'll tell you all <laughs> all about the the stuff that's going on out there so um I, you mentioned dry fire and i want to make sure that everybody in the world understands a dry fire is practicing with your firearm without using any ammunition okay so you can do that in your home folks but you need to be extra safe when you do that um double, triple check to make sure that there is no loaded round in your firearm or in the magazine. And I, in fact, tell people to move their ammunition outside of the room in which they're dry firing. I don't want any ammo in that room. And then there is probably 30 or 40 really good drills that you can use dry fire, no ammo, that are guaranteed to improve your shooting. Um, Eric, do you have a favorite dry fire drill that you like to use? Um... Oh, now I'm blanking. I think yeah. it's just finding a small, <laughs> a small thing in your in your mm -hmm. room and just uh, getting your sights on target, focusing on the front sight, and then squeezing as slow as you can until the the break or the click surprises you, and just hoping that mm -hmm. front sight does not move at all. Um, and then obviously yep. there's other things you can you can get like dummy rounds to help you uh, with like training or failure drills, or you can get some like laser doohickeys too, um, so you can see yeah. where where you would have hit. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I've been uh, I've been doing a lot lately. I'm a big fan of the uh, the switch plate, um, um, aiming at the light switches around the room um, or the uh, the outlets on the wall. And and you're absolutely right, um, folks. Eric is right. Focus on your front sight. Your target should probably be a little bit blurry because your eye can only focus on one thing at a time. But focus on your front sight. Put that front sight where it needs to go. And I love the way you describe trigger press, uh, Eric. Uh, press slowly, slowly till it surprises you. And uh, um, yeah, if you do that, you know, even just ten times a day, you will improve your trigger press to the point that your your shooting will rapidly improve when you get out there on the range. So. Um, what are the top five things people should not be doing? Well, I don't know if it's five, but uh, if you have a list of things that people should not be doing with their firearm, um, okay. what would it be, Eric? Hmm. I'd say overall, just uh, don't be afraid to ask for help at the range or when you're with friends. Mm -hmm. um, like if your gun's jammed, don't just like wave it around, like <laughs> raise your hand, get the, <laughs> yeah. the range officer to help you. <laughs> like mm -hmm. no one's going to make money yeah. for that. So don't worry. Uh, people usually love to help, especially on the range. Um, I'd mm -hmm. say don't immediately start trying to upgrade stuff. And I'm definitely guilty about this. Um, <laughs> so if your gun's not shooting straight, it's most likely you. So uh, keep up with that dry firing. It's it's not the sights. It's mm -hmm. almost never the sights. <laughs> yeah. And um, 
maybe other stuff. Yeah, like don't worry about what other people think about your guns and gear. Uh, they probably spent 10 times amount on whatever they have to, to look cool. So don't worry, especially in the beginning. You can worry about that later. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is definitely don't mix up the words magazine and clip, especially <laughs> online. <laughs> So magazines yeah. are what holds ammo, goes into your, your firearm, while clips help load your magazine a little faster. So people will freak out. They, they know what you mean, but people will freak out, mm -hmm. especially online. Um, and also know yeah. that AR in the AR-15 does not stand for assault rifle. It stands for Armalite. So those are the small terminology things that just freak people out online. So it's mm -hmm. just uh, easier if you learn it and get it straight. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll give everybody a little bit of insight out there. Before I came to this job eight years ago, I worked at a book publisher and we published gunsmithing books. And firearms folks are involved in this to the thousandth of an inch. I mean, that's how how technically proficient they want to be. So, um, and of course, you guys know what goes on online. Um, as soon as you make a mistake, everybody in the in the cyber world wants to correct you and show how smart they are. Um, so um, don't don't get upset with people. Don't argue online about different things, you know. But yeah, we do like it when you get things like clip and magazine and you use them correctly and and um, you know caliber and and whether it's going to be a, a forty Smith and Wesson or a nine millimeter, it's never going to be a forty millimeter. That's a grenade launcher. So <laughs> anything yeah, else that like, people should, one more should pay attention to. Okay, go. Yeah, I'd say one thing is just uh, don't worry if you aren't a crack shot at the beginning. The people that you see that are doing really, really well in competitions or at the range, they have thousands and thousands of rounds downrange and probably tens of thousands of dry firing back at home. So um, just don't worry about that. Just uh, get your training, get your safety up to spec. And uh, speaking of training, if you look down, I think it's, I hope it's down there. Um, there's, yeah. a, there's a really cool <laughs> offer from USCCA where you get a knife uh, training uh, USB with 50 hours of uh, free online training. And um, I've tried it out um, and uh, it's, it's really good. It's uh, put me levels ahead, especially my competition uh, shooting. Well, thank you. And I really want to uh, thank you for making note of that, Eric, because, you know, uh, you, you guys might see me in some of those 50 hours of training out there. So um, we had a great time putting all of that stuff together. Um, let, let's let's move on and, and uh, you know, become become really good buddies right now. Eric, what's the biggest mistake you ever made? Uh, um, uh, it, I guess when you're just learning about guns, not the biggest mistake you've ever made with a gun. And I'll share mine with you right now so we get it off the table. I launched a nine millimeter round through my mattress in my house in South Dakota out there one morning while I was gearing up and getting ready to uh, head off to work. And uh, that was uh, the last time, that was more than 20 years ago, but that was the last time I had a negligent discharge and it uh, put the fear of God into me when, uh, when that happened. But uh, um, you know, something you might've considered as a mistake when you jumped into the firearms community. Okay. Yeah, hope, uh, thankfully, mine wasn't a, an NB <laughs> negligent discharge. Um, mm -hmm. I think my my thing was just uh, getting a 1911 as a first gun. So it's, mm. it's a caveat. It's, it's an awesome platform. I have like five of them now. I think it's my favorite platform. But I definitely wouldn't suggest it as a first uh, gun for people. It's just, mm -hmm. um, it, it's like driving a Ferrari compared to, uh, I don't know, like a Toyota. You want something that just runs that is very, very easy. Um, then as you move up, I'd say then get it. I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate for that, mm -hmm. but um, still still love 1911s, yeah. but probably just not for a first gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a lot of folks out there who swear that the 1911 is the only gun that you should ever use uh, to defend yourself or something like that. Um, I I'll argue with those folks all day. Um, I, too, like the 1911 platform. It's really cool. But remember, it's now more than 100 years old. It's you know, it's, it's nearly a 110-year-old um, design. And in, in the interim, you know, um, yep. The, the design of the 1911, um, John Browning did a wonderful job designing it in 1911 actually you know earlier than that and all the people who have come after and used all of those great elements that he put in there we've made better guns since then um 1911 still works and it's still a good gun um but yeah there are there are guns that are easier to use easier to disassemble um certainly easier to clean and and might not be so finicky um when you're out there uh um you know, shooting on the range. So your, your 1911 was your first handgun. Um, do you remember the specific make, model, and size? Uh, what was it? Yeah, it was a Springfield loaded in stainless steel, and I got it just because it looked so cool, and I knew 1911s mm -hmm. from, like, video games and movies. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and the Springfield Loaded is a cool looking gun. So um, good choice if if that's what you're going for, something that's that's looking cool. Um, what about what about five most common mistakes? Um, what what sort of stuff gets talked about on your site and in your emails and things like that? What should people make note of so that they don't do it? Okay, um, first off, I'd say probably choosing a gun for the wrong reasons. Um, maybe what I did because simply because it was cool. Um, but I think a bigger reason is like, I'm small, so I should get a smaller gun while I think it definitely helps to have a as large a gun as you can handle. Just because if it's a small gun, mm -hmm. it's going to be very, very bad to shoot. It's going to be like a lot of recoil. It's going to flip. It's, it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. So you, you see like those, the boyfriends that get their girlfriends, like really small guns. I I'd, I'd advise against that. Um, yeah. definitely try the gun out on the range if possible, just so you know, if you like it, I'd say for handguns, it just really comes down to how it fits and feels in your hand more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Like try them all out and don't go super cheap on guns. Um, there, there's definitely mm -hmm. some affordable guns out there that are quite good. So you can search for those, but don't go get something just because it was under a hundred dollars or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, otherwise for when you're at the range, don't get distracted. Like always follow those four rules. You, you always see um, the people with a bunch of friends and they only have one firearm and one person shooting the other person's to his left or right, talking to them. And then they'll turn with the firearm and muzzle their friend. So that's, th those yeah. are one of the really scary, cringy moments I always see at the range. So just always keep that in mind, even when with your, uh, with your friends, like have fun, but also keep safe. And that mm -hmm. sort of goes along with just really try to get proper training. Uh, again, it's difficult now, but there's online solutions. You can read about stuff and watch a lot of videos. Um, so go with mm -hmm. that. And uh, I think I mentioned it before, just, um, Try to avoid getting too little ammo or too few mags. I know that's a little difficult now as well, but um, you'll mm -hmm. you'll thank me for it later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's uh, I think I've uh, uh, for the Glock 19, and and maybe I'm letting the cat out of the bag. People will tell me not to say how many guns I own, but um, three different Glock 19s, um, and I probably have um, 18 or 20 different magazines for that because. When I go to the range, you know what? I can I can load up magazines at night while I'm watching TV or doing something else, and then have them ready for me when I get to the range to do some training and and stuff like that. So, um, it, let's talk about you, you know, uh, guns should be fun, and yeah, we sometimes make a mistake. I have a box full of like 50 different holsters for my everyday carry gun that they, they were either they didn't fit just right or they weren't comfortable or something like that. Um, what would you consider to be one of your most, um, I, I don't know, impractical purchases or, or your funnest mistake that you've made with the, uh, with getting a firearm. Okay. This one, um, it wasn't a mistake. We bought it knowing that it would be terrible because we saw an ad for it, but it was a bicep holster. So if you can imagine mm -hmm. that it's, it's this <laughs> elastic band you have on your bicep with your gun and we just, it just looked really, really dumb. We made memes out of it and we just decided to actually get it so we can make more funny pictures out of it. But it was just, it's terrible. There's no way to draw it. It'll fall out if you just start running. It was, it's terrible, but it was still worth it for, for the yeah. <laughs> yeah, just for the, uh, just for the benefit of, of seeing what you don't want to use, you know, um, what about your your overflowing gear drawer? Like, you know, I, I let on that I probably own 50 different holsters. Um, what sort of thing do you get out there and buy all the time, even though you don't absolutely need a new one? So definitely hear you on the holsters, but otherwise I'd say another mistake I made when I was just getting into ARs was buying mm -hmm. the cheapest handguards on say eBay and really, really mm -hmm. cheap optics. And those are just, they're, they're just not worth it. <laughs> they're like overly heavy. Mm -hmm. They don't stay on, they don't stay accurate. And you just, uh, might as well buy once, cry once. And now I think we're mm -hmm. entering like a new age of just gear that's like really good quality that's not too expensive anymore, uh, especially in the optics mm -hmm. realm. Like if you hit about $100, you're you're pretty much golden now. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of different optics coming out there. Um, folks are, are, I don't know how the imports are going from China now, but they're importing some really good glass and, and hitting uh, decent specs um, from stuff that was imported optics that were working really well. And I was uh, recently at a writer's event where they had a, uh, 
um, a red dot scope for an AR-15 with a 50,000 hour battery life. So you could put the battery in on your birthday and leave that thing on all the time and, and, and you know, change it again on your birthday. And uh, I was looking very closely at that because I'm, it, I, it's invariable that, that I will pick up something that has batteries in it and the batteries will be dead. I consider my flashlights just, you know, metallic tubes for holding dead batteries. That's that typically what happens for me. So, um, what about uh, how should people just enjoy being a gun owner? I know how I do it. You know, I have I amass guns, and and uh, um, uh, several years ago, I made the vow never to sell another firearm. So I'm just purely in the acquisition stages at this point. Um, but people who have now joined the ranks of the gun owners, what's one uh, one or two or three good ways that they can really enjoy what they're doing? I think it's sort of just uh, going with what feels right in terms of being, I don't know, quote unquote, a, a gun owner. If all you want is just one gun to protect yourself, protect your family, then that's that's great. Uh, go out and practice with it. Make sure you get a like, good safe or or whatever, uh, depending on your house situation. Or you can go with uh, all the way to I think you and I, where we get every single widget for the gun. We have multiple guns. <laughs> we'll keep it mm -hmm. like that. And we have overflowing gear drawers. And so it's just, um, yeah, like whatever works for you. If you want to get every single widget for your gun, go for it. As long as it's safe, like no one cares. Um, uh, mm -hmm. If you're called a mall ninja, even better. <laughs> or if you're, yeah. if you're not, you just want one or two guns, that's cool too. So yeah. just uh, whatever mm -hmm. works. What, what would be the craziest thing that you've seen? And, and I'm going to give you mine. Um, and I know they're selling by the tens of thousands. I know the people who make them. Um, it is the the uh, Picatinny rail pistol bayonet. It's a, a tiny little knife that affixes to the, the light rail on your pistol. And, and um, people buy them. I know they're never going to use them. Um, what sort of things like that have you seen that just sort of made you chuckle? But, you know, maybe you ought to buy it just because it's fun. Yeah, I'm chuckling because we have that in our, I think it was like the five most like terrible tactical things on Amazon for your gun. Uh, one of our writers yeah. got it and started stabbing like wood. It actually stays on like, okay, it's just really, <laughs> it's it's yeah. pretty funny. Um, but otherwise, I'd have to say the testicles you add to your AR-15 that dangle there, uh -huh. it's like truck nuts, but not. <laughs> so there's, yeah. there's that. And I know they both yeah. sell well, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and those Good are the them. things that yeah they're out there. Yeah, somebody's somebody's making a living off of you know testicles that you can hang off the uh, <laughs> fore end or buttstock of your AR-15. Um, and people have asked me, you know, AR-15, why do you just keep buying stuff? And I say, well, AR-15 is like Barbie for grownups. You can accessorize any way that you want on your AR-15. And uh, um, I have one lower for which I have let's just say multiple different uppers um, so that I can interchange and, and back and forth everything from um, what I would call a home defense or a patrol carbine because I'm, I'm also a police officer to, you know, a, uh, a ultra accurate, super long range, long barrel, big scope, you know, and, and I just pop the new upper on the lower and I'm ready to go. So I'm having a good time with that sort of stuff. Thank you for joining us on this special broadcast from the USCCA with Eric Hung from Pew Pew Tactical. This is an amazing time to be a gun owner in America. More people than ever before are exercising their Second Amendment rights for the first time. Next time, we're going to talk about the next steps you can take to become a more confident gun owner. We'll see you soon. Stay tuned.